I've been playing uh, the English concertina for quite a few years now, uh, and seriously for the last few months. And uh, a couple of weeks ago, I got interested in uh, trying to learn to play the Anglo concertina, which is a, a different system, in case you don't know. Um, and I decided to sort of go in at the real budget end of the instrument, um, just to see if I like it, sort of dip my toe in the water. So I thought I'd share my experiences uh, with you in, in a form of a blog. So this is blog number one. Why am I doing this blog? Well, uh, in 2011, when I started learning to play the Melodeon, another squeeze box instrument, I decided to do the same thing, to kind of log my process right from day one. And I really was green as grass with squeeze box instruments uh, then. Didn't have a uh, vaguest clue about them. At least uh, starting this uh, instrument, I have got some idea of it that's going to stand me in good stead but I really am a total beginner and it will be interesting to see uh, how and if I develop with this uh, fantastic instrument I really enjoy playing it not sure it's going to replace my English concertina playing uh, but I'm certainly enjoying uh, learning it so this week I took delivery of uh, a concertina that I got on eBay uh, which cost me 30 pounds and this is it and there'll be uh, concertina owners all over the world cringing when they see this because this is uh, a Rossetti Rambler, which is quite infamous in the world of uh, concertinas. Um, actually, it was £30 including postage and it's in incredibly good condition. Um, there's hardly a mark on it. Uh, I had to laugh when I took it to Martin White is the, my guy local to me who mends uh, and fettles all my sort of uh, squeeze boxes. He told me that the, um, the wood grain effect is actually a black felt tip pen, <laughs> which is pretty, pretty impressive, isn't it? Um, but anyway, it's quite a nice looking thing, has, it has to be said, and it's pretty lightweight. Um, I'll just undo these straps, one there and one there keeps the bellows nice and tight and uh, let's just open it up for you obviously in Anglo you put your hands through the straps there's an air button which is part of the, the playing technique as well but actually <laughs> it's quite a nice looking thing isn't it really if you didn't really know you probably think that was a really uh, nice instrument um, so it's one two three four five six and eight nine fold bellows um, as I say, wood grain effect. Uh, what I didn't know until I got it is that it's not a CG, it's actually a GD. So there are 20 buttons on this concertina, uh, set out in two rows. Uh, you've got uh, 10 this side, 10 this side, and basically it's, it's in two keys. It's in the keys of G and D. So this uh, line of buttons here gives you all the notes in the key of G, starting low there, getting higher and higher, and then carrying on around here. Uh, so the row of buttons nearest uh, to the front of the constant as you're holding it, uh, that is the G row, and the row inside that is the D row, starting low around here and carrying on around here. As I say, you've got the, the air button which you keep your thumb on. Um, what does it sound like? Well. You're about to find out. I'll play you a little tune, uh, which is called Go Tell Aunt Rody. I'll play it in the key of G, uh, the lower of the two keys, and you'll get the idea. <laughs> I mean, it's not too terrible, really, is it? It's a little bit out of tune. Let's listen to the notes uh, on their own. And by the way, there are two reeds per button, so they're set out in octaves. Uh, and that is the G row, now the D row. The ends are held on by three screws, one, two, three. Uh, the good thing about uh, the insides, and I will show that in a separate video, is you can get to all the reeds. So I'll play you a little single note uh, 
melody. Uh, this is Little Donkey, Christmas song, um, and it's in G, so I'm going to use uh, notes up and down the G row, the row nearest to the front um, of the concertina, that's the lower of the two rows. So uh, obviously with a concertina like this, in case you don't know, you get different notes on the push and the pull. So here we go. You get the idea. Um, so you can hear the tuning is not brilliant, uh, but it's, you know, 30 pounds. I mean, what do you expect for 30 pounds? Uh, I was expecting it to be a lot worse than this, I have to say. Yes, it is a bit out of tune. It's a bit wheezy, it's a bit nasty, but you can definitely get a tune out of it. And it certainly uh, piqued my interest enough to uh, have a look uh, at another concertina, which I'll tell you about in a moment. To be honest with you, I had absolutely no intention of buying another Anglo concertina for quite some time. I mean, English is what I play, it's what I'm really into. Um, but it just so happened that yesterday, uh, my wife and I were browsing around uh, a real old type of music shop, uh, local to where we live. Um, and if you think about something you might have seen in the 60s, um, this shop was piled high with everything you can possibly imagine. Old guitars, ukuleles, violins, um, piano accordions, there was a set of bagpipes in there. You name it, you could have found it in there. And in amongst uh, all the other stuff, uh, there were quite a few concertinas. The guy said to me, how about this one? And he handed me this. Now again, this will set uh, concertina experts uh, running for cover because again, it's a sort of a budget end um, instrument. As you can see, it's a lot better finished than the, the Rosetti Rambler uh, that I was just playing. This is a Honer, it's got these rather nice uh, bellow straps with studs on this one. Let's undo that one. And then there as well. And we'll just um, strap, the hand straps are quite nice because they are adjustable via these buckles. That's a distinct improvement on the other one. Um, air button. I'll open it out and you can see all the bellows. This is uh, a D40. D stands for diatonic, 40 stands for the amount of uh, uh, reeds. There are 20 buttons and of course each button gives you two notes, so two reeds per button as your 40 reeds. And there are 10 folds to the bellows. That's quite a pretty thing. I particularly like the ends. Uh, they appear to have a kind of a wood wooden finish, not quite sure what it is. Rather nice kind of purfling here, and it's angled, and it's finished off pretty well. Um, it sounds a lot better than the other one does. I mean, with the other one, um, apart from anything else, the buttons, um, they disappear through the hole, so when you're playing, you, know, you feel like your finger's gonna get swallowed up while you're playing. Uh, not so with this one. This is uh, much nicer. Uh, these are much maligned on the internet. A lot of people really hate these things. Um, but for uh, 79 pounds, I wasn't really that worried. I think they're about 179 pounds new. Um, so I was pretty pleased with it. Um, so it's 20 button. Now, as I say, I was a bit surprised when I got the other one to find that it was a GD. I think I'm right in saying that most uh, people who play an Anglo tend to play a C, G. Now this is uh, the row nearest the front is the C row, starting low there, OK? 
carrying on over here and the row behind it is the G row. And obviously this is only 20 buttons, it doesn't have the third row, it's not a 30 button like a lot of Anglos are and that extra row gives you lots of uh, accidentals or black notes if you like so you can play uh, uh, far more tunes than you can on a 20 button. But uh, the 20 button is quite capable of dealing with uh, lots of basic folk tunes and that will do me fine until I uh, get any further with it and we'll see what happens with that. As I say, it has an air button. It has a rather uncomfortable uh, screw here where that screw is holding the end in there. It's actually quite uncomfortable on the palm of the hand but um, uh, we'll see how we get on with that. But it is quite nicely finished on the outside. Having said that, I opened it up this morning and it's pretty horrible inside and again I'll deal with that in a separate video but it's there's literally a great wadge of either glue or wax all over the blocks where the reeds are holding them in and I could only see the, uh, the push reeds, couldn't see the pull reeds. Guess if I needed to do any work on those I'd have to somehow melt all the, the glue or the wax, whatever it is, to get the, block, the blocks out but uh, that's a long way down the line for me. Um, so let's play those same two tunes, my only tunes I know at the moment. Uh, I'll give you a bit of uh, Go Tell Aunt Rody first of all. So we've got the, the Yung Pa. So we're going to play it in the key of C, the lower of the two keys. Um, so there's my... And I'm playing a single bass and two notes together to give me a chord. Um, and I'll play the tune on the right hand side. And you can hear that's a bit more sophisticated, it appears to be pretty well in tune uh, and not so wheezy and nasty as the other one. Um, having said that, I still quite like the other one at the moment. Uh, given time I'll probably hate the pair of them, I'll be desperate to buy a really expensive one knowing me. Um, I'll give you a bit of Little Donkey. And interestingly enough, of course, uh, what I was playing on the, uh, the row nearest the front, which was the G row, okay, uh, on the other concertina, I could transfer to the, the back row and still be playing in G, albeit uh, an octave higher. So I could be playing... And I'm going to choose to play it on the C row, play it in the key of C, uh, that's the row nearest the front of the concertina. So in C, little donkey. so forth. So there we are. Um, those are the two tunes I know at the moment and obviously this Hona D40 is a lot uh, more sophisticated uh, than the poor old Rosetti Rambler that I got earlier on in the week but it's still a budget end box. Um, so that's more or less the end of blog number one, uh, me learning to play the Anglo concertina. But I'm glad I've got this, this Hona at least I feel like I'm on the same page as most concertina players um, and time will tell whether I uh, stick with these budget end models or if I go for something uh, a bit more sophisticated obviously a lot more expensive if you don't know concertinas are pretty expensive things when you start getting into the, the um, sort of the better um, models you do have to pay quite a lot more I mean I've got two concertinas that were uh, more than a thousand pounds each second hand give you some idea and the, these two Anglos 30 pounds and 79 pounds obviously are very very cheap anyway uh, I hope you found that interesting and uh, we'll see what happens in blog number two